In this video, we're going to talk about negative interest rates. What are negative interest rates? Well, they are the exact opposite of a typical or positive interest rate. In a negative interest rate environment, borrowers get paid to borrow money from lenders. In a positive interest rate environment, which is usually the case, the lenders make money when they lend their money to borrowers. But let's illustrate this with some pictures. So let me see if I still have my drawing skills. Let's call this a bank. So the bank is going to be the lender in this illustration. And on the right, this is going to be a borrower. Let's call this Arnold. Now let's say the interest rate is positive and Arnold goes to the bank and takes out a $100,000 mortgage to buy a house. Now some homes may cost $200,000 or $300,000, but $100,000 is it's a nice round number, so we're going to stick with that. So let's say he takes a $100,000 mortgage loan at an interest rate of 4%. And now let's say for the first 12 months, he doesn't make any payments. Using the simple interest formula, I equals PRT, I is interest, P is the principal, R is the interest rate as the decimal, T is the time. So in one year, his debt is going to increase by $4,000. That's how much interest he's going to owe after one year. So his total debt is going to be $104,000. So in a positive interest rate environment, the debt of the borrower goes up due to interest if no payments are made. But now let's analyze the situation in a negative interest rate environment. So let's say Arnold takes out the same mortgage of $100,000. And let's say the interest is negative 2% which in reality, that's probably not going to happen. But for the sake of illustration, let's say it's a negative 2%. So what's going to happen in this case is that his debt is going to go down. In fact, after one year, his debt will decrease by 2000. He's being credited $2,000 after one year. So 100,000 minus 2000 is 98,000. So if he doesn't make any payments, his debt will, will decrease from $100,000 to $98,000. And so in a positive interest rate environment, the lender benefits, the lender makes money. But in the negative interest rate environment, the borrower benefits, they make money. So basically in the negative interest rate environment, the lender is paying the borrower to borrow money from them. Now, after considering this situation, you might think that negative interest rates are good. Well, it's beneficial for borrowers if they need to borrow money. It's better to borrow money in a negative interest rate environment than in a positive interest rate environment. But for those who don't need to borrow money, this may not be a good thing. For instance, let's use another illustration. So I'm going to draw another stick figure. And we're going to call this person John. And let's draw another bank. So let's say John opens up a savings account. And he decides to deposit $10,000. And let's say we're in a positive interest rate environment. And in this saving account, or rather savings account, the bank agrees to credit him with, let's say, 2% interest annually. So what's 2% of 10,000? This is 10,000 times 0 0.02. But if you want to do the math mentally, 
10% of 10,000 is 1,000. 1% 1 of 10,000 is 100. So 2% of 10,000 is $200. So after one year, John is going to receive an interest payment of $200. So after one year, his savings account will be worth 10200 In this case, you could think of John as being the lender and the bank as being the borrower. When John makes a deposit to the bank, he's basically lending the bank his money. And the bank pays him interest. Well, what about in the negative interest rate environment? Let's say John opens a savings account and deposits 10000 And let's say the current interest rate is negative 1% a year. Well, this is not good for John. As a lender, he's going to lose money. After one year, he's going to lose $100. So his account balance will be $9,900. Thus, John is losing money in a negative interest rate environment. Now, the amount that he's losing is really not that bad because many people, they pay a monthly maintenance fee for holding a checking account. You might pay 10 bucks a month or 120 bucks a year, which in this case is not too much compared to what John is paying. He's paying 100 a year for the bank to hold his money. However, for those with large savings account, this could be a huge difference. Imagine if John deposited a million dollars instead of 10,000. A negative 1% interest rate would be damaging. 1% of a million is 10,000. So in one year, he's going to have to pay $10,000 in interest. This is way more than monthly maintenance fees. So for those who have a lot of cash and they deposit it at a bank, if the interest rate is negative, and that's, that can cost them a lot of money. Thus, you could think of negative interest rates as you paying the bank to basically hold or store your money, which is opposite to what we see in a regular positive interest rate environment, where banks pay people whenever they make a deposit. They pay them interest over time. Now, fortunately, I haven't seen a situation where banks actually charge negative interest to people who make deposits with them, which is a good thing. But you never know what could happen in the future. That could change. Maybe they may start charging negative interest to customers. But it has happened between the central bank and the banks of this country, the U.S. Actually, earlier this year, the central bank charged smaller banks negative interest for depositing money that exceeded their reserve requirement. So imagine if a bank has $100,000, I mean, actually, let's say a lot more than that, $100 million in excess that is at the or stored at the central bank or the Federal Reserve of the US. And let's say that the interest is negative 0.25%. 1% of 100 million is 1 million. So a quarter of that will be negative $250,000. So in the negative interest rate environment, the banks are paying a lot of money to the central bank for them holding excess cash. So why do the central banks, or in this case, the Federal Reserve of this country, why do they implement negative interest rates? Well, during a recession or during a pandemic like the one we're in, the Fed will typically try to lower interest rates in order to stimulate growth in the economy. And in this case, the interest went below zero. It went negative. So this discourages the banks from depositing their excess cash to the central bank. Instead, this gives banks incentives to loan their cash to people and generate positive interest because banks, they need to make money in order to survive. And if banks put money in the hands of the people, if people take out loans, 
chances are they're going to use that money for personal things, paying bills, or even investing. And as the spending increases, the economy will expand. And that's the idea behind lowering the rates, is to stimulate the economy out of a recession. So that's basically it for this video. Hopefully it gave you a good understanding of how negative interest rates work. So to review, in a positive interest rate environment, lenders make money. But in a negative interest rate environment, it benefits the borrower. In a positive interest rate environment, the borrower pays interest to the lender for a loan. In a negative interest rate environment, the lender pays the borrower to take out a loan. And remember, in a positive interest rate environment, the debt of the borrower goes up. In a negative interest rate environment, the debt of the borrower goes down. So hopefully that clarified things. If not, that's all I got for this video. Thanks for watching though.